Now let's recap what you need to do before, during, and after the disciplinary meeting. Before the meeting, ask yourself what is the desired performance and what is the actual performance. We need you to be courteous to customers at all times. But in the past month, I've heard you speaking rudely to customers on the phone three different times. What are the good business reasons why this problem needs to be solved? John, there are good reasons for our smoking policy. Some people are allergic to cigarettes. Secondhand smoke can be a health hazard. Cigarettes can cause fires, and the smoke affects our ventilation system. What are the consequences the employee will face if the problem continues? Well, I would have to move you to a desk that's closer to my office so I can pay closer attention to what you're doing. And I probably won't approve your participation on the annual event committee. What is the appropriate action to take? When other people haven't improved their behavior to customers, we've given them a written warning. That's why our conversation today is a formal disciplinary meeting. During the meeting, get right to the point. I've got a problem, Ted, and I need your help. Listen to the employee. And this morning, I noticed you were almost 20 minutes late. What's going on? Steve, I know I was late. There was a guy hit by a car outside the gate. I didn't hear the sirens. Make sure you gain agreement from the employee. I need your agreement that you'll meet your quota of sales calls every day. I'll try. <laughs> I'm glad you'll try, but what I need is a real commitment. OK. I'll make the calls. Every day. Every day. Insist on an action plan. Now, how could you free up one hour a day to go to a class? I guess I could come in a half hour early and maybe I could take a half hour for lunch. Let employees know where they stand. This is now the fourth time we've had to talk about this problem, Ted. Because of that, and because of the seriousness of the issue, I'll be giving you a formal written reminder about the need to wear your safety glasses and use the machine guard. After the meeting, Document the discussion and follow up to make sure that the problem is solved and give recognition. Connie, I want you to know that I appreciate the fact that you're not taking personal calls at work anymore. This positive approach to the difficult challenge of handling disciplinary problems builds respect and responsibility. Respect for the high standards that the organization sets and respect for the individual who's treated as an adult with a problem to solve not as a child who must be punished for misbehavior. It places the responsibility for correcting a problem where it belongs, on the shoulders of the employee who created the problem in the first place. Respect and responsibility move employees beyond mere compliance to genuine commitment to the goals and standards of the enterprise. Respect and responsibility, a positive approach to discipline.